Радіо Сковорода. Доброго дня всім глядачам та слухачам Радіо Сковорода. Я називаюся Олеся Манзевич і сьогодні ми маємо чудових гостей, музикантів із Бельгії оригінально. Це є проект Аро і Коноба. Uh, hello guys. Hey. Hello. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you in Lviv. Is it your first time in Ukraine? That's the uh, first time. Very first time, yes. Very yes. first time. Yeah, and yeah. How, how are your impressions? Oh, we love it so far. But we just arrived yesterday and okay. we played the show. And so today we just had a couple of hours to go around and uh, discover the city. And so far we really like it. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's got a nice vibe. Uh, how was your show, your yesterday show? It was the first time that you performed yeah. before Ukrainian uh, public. Exactly. So when we come to a new country and we don't really know what to expect, we don't know how many people will come, if people like all kind of music. So it's always a big surprise. And sometimes we're super impressed and sometimes we're a bit disappointed. And yesterday we were very impressed. Yeah. Like we were, we had an almost full house with like over 300 people and, and everyone was giving a lot of energy, singing the songs with us, dancing, jumping, and we had a, a really fun time. Mm. Mm. Does Ukrainian public have like some some kind of a special vibe or? I think so, yeah. I we're think just so, normal yeah. European no, people. It's, uh, <laughs> no, it's it, um, the emotion. Mm. The yeah. energy is kind yeah. of different in some countries and sometimes in like France or something, uh, people will be a bit cold. They will like the show, but they will be a bit quiet and cold and come and shake your hand after. Yesterday, after the show, all of we, we spent some time with the fan and everyone was, on, was hugging us and saying yeah. thank you oh so gosh. much, we had a great time. <laughs> including so the guys. Of, in, yeah, including <laughs> the guys, of course, of course. Yes. And, uh, and so that's maybe the, the difference is that the, the audience here was very full of emotion. Yeah. It's so it's so great to hear that we are uh, like really friendly. We, we we've made you a warm welcome. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. It was really beautiful. Really. So, let's start from the beginning. All right. Uh, uh, you started working together in 2015, I guess. Yeah, around that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how did you two meet? Because both of you were established mu musicians yeah. mm, yourselves. Yeah, and yeah. So you met and you decided to. Yeah, I, I saw a video of him on the internet and I uh, really enjoyed it and then sent a message and then he listened to my music, he really enjoyed it as well. So, and we have complementary skills, so we thought it would be nice to, mm. to, to meet and like uh, try to do something together. And yeah, we, he went to my place, uh, then we made one song that was really cool. And then we went to the countryside to his grandmother's place mm -hmm. in Belgium and that's where we did On Our Knees. Uh, and Rafa had already the piano and the vocals, and I heard it, I was like, God, it's, it's gonna be good. <laughs> so, yeah, I made the beat, like the, you okay. know, the, si the synths and stuff, and then we released it like that. And it did extremely well. Uh, I think also a big part of the of success in Ukraine, or like people that know us come from this song, mm -hmm. um, because it did, a lot of views thanks to the algorithm on YouTube, I'm not sure, but lots yeah. of yeah. Eastern <laughs> countries. People, yeah. Um, like Georgia, like Poland, like, mm -hmm. you know, Ukraine uh, f found us through this music. So, yeah, yeah. that's how it started, basically. And what are the complementary skills you're talking about, <coughs> except, you know, proficiency with music, yeah. <laughs> musical instruments? Well, like I mean, I'm doing productions for, for a very long time, but a lot of uh, different styles of music and uh -huh. like also dance music. Raphael also produced music, mm -hmm. uh, electronic music and synths and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I come from more like a um, DJ background, let's say. So, I don't know. I've, I yeah. never, s I never sang, and I never like. I, I, I don't You're have that. I don't have that skill. You know, I don't well, have we, that skill. Yeah, but I love some design. Yeah, we both have a lot of different skills, yeah. and a lot of them are the same. But <coughs> yeah. we we take the best of both of us. So uh, I will I will focus on like my voice and the melody and the lyrics and that that part of the the music, and Oli will focus more on the, the beat making, the, the sound design and production. And then we uh, swap over a little yeah. bit. He will give me some of his advice and some of his comments on the vocals. And I will just do the same with the production. And then that's how we, you know, we make the best uh, out of both mm. our mm. skills. Mm. And after the success uh, of your first single on our uh, yeah, on always. our knees, uh, were you surprised? I mean, did this whole happening exceed your expectations, yeah, yeah, or yeah, you kind of imagined it time. would be like no, that? No, big time, big time, because. 
actually this success it's uh, completely crazy um it, like nothing ever happens like that in the music business today it's very hard there's so many artists releasing music every day a lot of them with big labels big promotion the, the labels control the playlist they control the marketing so for an indie artist to just release a song without a label without a publisher without a pr company nothing and to do like we have made maybe 50 million views now if you count all the platforms crazy. it's I mean, it never happens, almost <laughs> never happens, it's super it's, rare. It's quite so rare, it was yeah. a, a bit of luck, a bit of maybe we did something special without realizing, but clearly we never ever expected to have no. that kind of success, no. Do you think that ha there has to be some like, kind of secret ingredient in order to <laughs> a song to perform like that? Um, I think so, yeah. I think the secret ingredient is just how it uh, resonates with people. Yeah. And it's something you can't really quantify, you can't really uh, guess by advance. It's like it just happens, there's something that clicks. Yeah. And you can't uh, decide to do it, you can't, you no. can't say, okay, I'm going to do no, this special thing. No, it doesn't thing. work. <laughs> it just happens magically. So magic here thing. it is, yeah. the special yeah. thing. Yeah. And sometimes no. we're like, extremely happy about some of our songs and they don't do nearly quite as well as yeah. uh, Anonis. And there must be something with Anonis that, that is special to people. And I think that's the reason, yeah. Let's talk about the project Project Ten mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you released not not so long time ago. You've released the album as a result of this Project Ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you traveled for a year. Yeah, for yeah, uh, ten months. For ten, ten months, months yeah. you traveled all <coughs> over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you come up with this idea of traveling and making music? Well, uh, it came So you just sat somewhere yeah. in the countryside in Belgium and decided, hmm, we should go uh, traveling. Well, <laughs> something like that. But I think, after, no, I after think after we were, um, we went to play, to perform at Ziget Festival. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on a really small stage, but uh, that was uh, two years ago. Yeah. And uh, that was the first time we performed together because mm -hmm. we, we had a solo project where we were on tour separately. But we had this small opportunity to go there, so we went there, we played a show, and we spent the whole week there together. We made lots of friends, had a good time, talked about music a lot. So. When we came home on the flight, we were discussing the fact that, one, we have a lot of fans listening to our music now in different countries. So we want to go there and perform and meet people and visit those countries. Two, we like, you know, making music, performing together and stuff. So we wanted, wanted to do an album together. And then three, we were like kind of, ah, this is the time in our life where we still have time to travel and the opportunity to travel. 
and we were both single at the time and we're like okay it's now or never if you want to do something crazy so how can we do all three things so go to these countries where people listen to our music make an album together and travel and so we mixed the three together <laughs> into project 10. So how did you choose countries for your mm. Mm, the yeah, for so, the project. Uh, so there's two sides. So the first one is the analytics on uh, on YouTube and Spotify and internet. So we just checked where we had the most fans. So it wasn't like blind. <laughs> Let's no, spin no, the globe no, and no, here no, we are. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No. Uh, so some countries were decided like that, like uh, Poland, Georgia, uh, some others, and also countries that are close to us, like France, uh, Germany, Germany um, uh, Netherlands. But then we also wanted to um, expand like the the flavor somehow of the of the trip. It's like we wanted to to see other places that are very different from the Europe. So that's why we chose uh, Australia because we wanted to go to Australia. Uh, I've been touring a little bit in Australia mm -hmm. before, and uh, and Raf really wanted to go. Um, it's a really amazing country. Mm -hmm. And then Japan, of course, we both really wanted to go, and it's so different culturally mm -hmm. that we wanted absolutely to have this. So the uh, Japan is a good example because yeah. we don't have any fans in Japan, <coughs> <and> very <laughs> few, because it's a completely separate market. They have their own platforms, their own uh, market, everything. So we don't really have many fans in Japan at all. So we didn't choose to go there because of the fans and the demand there, but more for the experience, the, experience, the cultural uh, discoveries, the flavor that it added to the, the yeah. album. So yeah, yeah. And same for Colombia. Same for Colombia. Colombia. Yeah, we did also Colombia and like those countries yeah. were just us that wanted to go there basically mm -hmm. and we found a good reason to. Uh, you've mentioned the thing about the flavor. Uh, I listened to the, to the songs from this uh, mm -hmm. album Project Ten, and um, when I was listening to the song uh, that you you've written in Romania, I got this kind of a <laughs> this Romanian type of w vibe because uh, here in like Ukraine in Eastern Europe, Ro mm -hmm. Romanian music is quite popular. Oh, and you, yeah, and. Actually, I think that the Romanian music is now quite popular in Europe as well. And but still, okay. they have these kind of a you know sounds and music that you like can catch it whenever <laughs> whenever mm -hmm. you listen to the song. How do you yeah. kind of how did you listen to a lot of local music when you were there to um, catch that flavor? Not quite as much. Uh, we didn't listen to actually like. In Romania, in some, countries, Romania. Yes. some countries like we did. Some countries we did, but, uh, but to try and get inspired. But most of the time, no. Romania, just, no. Uh, and in Romania, it was different. Actually, just a happy accident, I think, that <laughs> it sounds like something yeah. maybe similar because we were in, we were in a festival, Electric uh, Castle, Electric Castle uh -huh. festival in yeah. Romania, super cool festival, and we wanted to make a dancey, like kind of a dancey track and something. We had a lot of energy after the festival, and we wanted like this kind of vibe. So, so saw, yeah, we saw yeah. people like Muramasa, Mur mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, Netsky, yeah, and San Holo, uh, like all, yeah. all of that stuff. And mm. uh, and so we we just enjoyed seeing them on the big stage doing big like electronic sounds, and we wanted to make a track like that. So that's yeah. kind of how yeah. We and you made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we made it. And we made it. But so yeah, we, we didn't quite uh, wanted to represent the sounds of the country of the country. It wasn't the plan. I mean, sometimes we did because we record a lot of sound in the streets uh -huh. like street musicians like uh, violinists or like mm -hmm. opera singers and stuff and we include them in the music but we're not trying to mimic the, na the national, national music or, motives at all. or something. no at all uh, it could have been a project we could have done it but we did we wanted to do our album that represents what we want to to yeah. to do and um, the country was just the medium you know it was mm -hmm. just the the vibe that mm -hmm. we felt there I'm about to lose my mind Feeling all the pressure waiting on my shoulders Forcing me to stay in line I could try a different life Get rid of the shackles, flying like an eagle Freedom is my only child So we could roll the dice We can't be sure, but it could be nice So why? You waiting for not much to lose when you're on the phone. So
about it every night So I'm just feeling different I can lose my patience I don't wanna waste more time I could try a different life Get rid of the shackles Fly like an eagle Freedom is my only child Cause how we Could roll the tides We can't be shy So how it usually, so how it happened with you when you, so you arrive in, yeah. into the country, yeah. do you stay in one city or how no, many no, no. cities you usually uh, visit? So um, <laughs> it depends on the country, but usually we, we visited between five, six cities in yeah. a month. That means about three, four days per city on average, mm -hmm. plus the trips between, uh, and we we went to the cities where we had shows to play. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that forced us to go to different places because we had to play shows. Other cities we just wanted to visit. And uh, and yeah, it was kind of... Okay, we can just spend for two or three days here, then move to a play a show, then move the next day, then sometimes yeah. we to the countryside. Each month, we tried and take two or three days in the countryside somewhere, really quiet, with nothing to do, so we could just focus on the music. Because when we're traveling, playing, discovering new cities, it's so full of experiences that we don't have that much time to make music mm -hmm. so we have to force ourselves and be like okay now it's three days let's just pick mm -hmm. a, a flat somewhere in the countryside that's cozy and comfortable and we can sleep and we can make music all day and all night and so that's yeah that's how we did it yeah and sometimes the, the schedule was quite flexible like we would choose to go somewhere randomly not randomly but like the two days before we're like, oh we should go there because we close now and so sometimes it was flexible because we didn't have uh, sometimes shows mm -hmm. and we could uh, improvise and like do go where, wherever we wanted so that was also cool I mean that must be so hard for yourself <laughs> to for you to manage yourselves uh, because it's not yeah. just like you're going vacationing no. you are playing music you're playing shows yeah. and you're composing something mm -hmm. new yeah. Uh, how does it work? So you, you you draw yourself like plans or something like uh, that. So well, for yeah. four days we will be like just walking around, exploring yeah. the city, and then what? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Raf is uh, quite good at organizing stuff. <laughs> way better than me, that's for sure. <laughs> and so yeah, it, it would like say, oh, we should go like go there and like spend a few days there. But usually, what happened is like we want to see as much as the country and get inspired. And towards the end we would actually uh, compose the, the song. Of course, sometimes uh, I would start stuff in the car or we would start something in the Airbnb and then we would expand from there. But uh, usually it would be towards the end um, and we would like go just a few days to the to a countryside because we like countryside to compose. Mm. And um, we just, yeah, locked ourselves for four days and we're like, okay, we have four days, we'll, we're gonna make the song. And we knew that we can do it because we work uh, quite fast. So that's how it happened, basically, yeah. It wasn't that much pressure. The, the, the mo most complicated was uh, the driving and like... Yeah, it was very exhausting. Exo it's really exhausting. No, because yeah. honestly, like one month yeah. and to do sometimes four or five thousand kilometers drive in one month because we go to all different mm -hmm. places in the country and changing flats every two or three days. So it means uh, getting to a new place yeah. and in, a, new, in a different bed, in a different kitchen. And then, and then we had yeah all the equipment, so to not leave it in the car, we had to mm -hmm. take everything out. And sometimes we had like three, four stairs, like we stairs, don't. stairs oh so my. we had to carry everything. With no elevator. No, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. sometimes. Uh, and so, and then we had to, of course, plan where we're gonna sleep, what we're gonna eat, cook, uh, make the music, play the shows, rehearse the new songs. Because when when we were composing new songs mm -hmm. for the project, we were just 
have to rehearse them to add them to the show as well. Do the so we did the music, social media social game. media like and then the yeah. making music videos as well. We made several music videos on the road. So yeah. everything put together, it was like so full, full all the time that it was quite exhausting. Actually. Yeah, quite yeah. exhausting for but sure. But very fun. I mean, yeah, yeah. We we're super happy about the result, and that's all that matters. And, and the young people, they think that we were partying all the time because they're like, oh, so you went on the road, like you must have been musicians. musicians <laughs> we must have that's what you do. The thing is that we were so busy, we didn't have time to go out. So yeah. yes, maybe twice a month. Yeah. We would just have one night out where we'd meet people, we go out, we go a bit crazy, but max twice per month because yeah. <laughs> otherwise we, we would be too tired to carry on with the, the trip. Yeah. Now t it takes a lot of efforts, you know, to keep going when you're exactly. on the road like that. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah, it did. What is the, the hardest thing about when you're working on a song, about composing mm. a song? I mean, is it, or how, how, how does that begin with you? Um, I mean, you have... Oof. The beginning is kind of the, the easiest. It's I think that it's the finishing that's the hardest. <laughs> or, or saying when it is finished, you know? Like at some point you just have to say when it's It's, it's finished. done. It's done <laughs> and it should Because there is no limit to perfection. Oh, exactly. I mean you can exactly. work. That's a very good point. There is no limit yeah. to that. We can always continue and, and like tweak some details. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it, it, should, it would be bad for the song. So some, at some point, I think it's the hardest. Uh, to, to, to actually finish finish a song. Starting a song is fun, you know, it's just it's just playing. It's like when you draw, just draw something and whatever you do, even if it's, you know, you're just drawing. It's mm -hmm. whatever you yeah. do, it, it, there's something that's happening, so it's good. Um, but to actually perfect the track and like make it as you want, that's the hardest, yeah. But yeah, but the process is, is quite uh, quick with us because we, we have a lot of different tools. We have music production, so that means in the computer we have already so many different <laughs> sounds of instruments, real instruments mm -hmm. sometimes, also electronic instruments, um, uh, more like percussive sounds like drums and stuff. So we have like so many options in the computer and then we have banks of samples of drum mm -hmm. sounds, of flute sounds, of everything. So we could just start by just finding this like flute melody or something and be like, okay, this is a cool little melody. What beat would go well with this? And then start mm -hmm. with, uh, like a beat and I'd be like, okay, I can maybe write some, some lyrics. Uh, it's inspiring me something. So we, whatever we start with, we can start with the lyrics, we can start with the beat, we can start with the melody, with instrument. So whatever we start with, then we start building the, the building music. up. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's actually really quick. Like yeah. we, we even did uh, when we were in Poland, we did the song in 10 hours. Because we had we made this challenge uh, that we um, collaborated with this uh, these guys in Poland. They invited mm -hmm. us to their studio and they said, "Okay, the the plan is to have ten hours and to make a whole song." And so we just said, "Okay, let's do this." And I just sat, sat on the piano, which just found like just three chords and started writing a, a verse. So I sent the the chords and the the tempo to Oli, who then he started making a beat and the synths while I was writing the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we just go back and forth and in 10 hours we finish the whole song because if we focus and if we keep going, if we never stop finding ideas, exactly. then we can be, we can be pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes the challenge is good because it forces you to just like be effective and not sleep, yeah. you know, not like, you know, you just continue doing mm -hmm. it because sometimes when you compose, you just, you do a, a loop, for example, that you really yeah. like and you keep listening to it and you keep listening <laughs> to it and it, nothing happens, you know, and then it's good that we have a limit of time and then we can like, oh, we have to keep going. That's, uh, that's the game, yeah. Uh, you've mentioned the loop uh, yeah. and that you keep listening and listening <coughs> to it. Do you ever get tired of music like that it keeps going on? Like, mm. and did you listen to the music while you were on the road? Oh, all the time, lot, all yeah. the time the actually. Car, yeah. I think it's actually it's refreshing. I think. We can get tired of music, but it's pretty rare to be honest. There's always there's so many so much different music that if you get tired of something, you can listen to something else yeah. that's that's different. Uh, of course, like it can get tiring to listen to techno all the time or to listen to uh, folk all the time or to listen to mm -hmm. an anything yeah. all the time. It can be tiring, but since we have so so many a variety of tastes, there's always something that we can take from um, things, mm -hmm. and it's always interesting, and we don't get bored. Don't get bored listening. We actually yeah. listen in the car all the time. Sometimes, hip hop. Yeah. But sometimes, of course, sometimes your, your ears. Wanna, yeah, I let my ears yeah. rest. rest for yeah, a of while. Course, silence. Of course, just of course. like yeah. Maybe that's why you like countryside because also, it's also, silent. Also, of yeah, course, yeah, definitely. of course. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, sometimes yeah. It, it's normal that you need a, a little break. 
but yes. it rarely happens. <laughs> but like now, like today, for example, I don't really feel like listening to music so me much neither, because we just played four shows in four days. Uh, and so that means every time it's like sound check, it's a whole show yeah. with the music, the sound. And so the ears, they get a bit tired and it's a weird yeah. tired as well because we're traveling so much and listening to music on the road as well. And so now like a day like today, I would just like to, you know, Same. Like, like we did today, just walk around the city and discover <laughs> and have some, have some nice food, nice coffee. And then tomorrow we can get back to making music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. This project ten, uh, it was a massive thing to do. I mean, mm -hmm. t ten months with traveling and playing shows and stuff like that. Do you compose music now, or you just took a break and you're just playing it? Oh, or composing a lot lately. Yeah, composing a lot. Uh, sure. It's a never-ending story. So. Yeah, but not yeah. right now, not on tour. Uh, I mean, a yeah. little bit, you a did a little bit in a the car. A little bit, yeah. But it's, we're so busy already. Like I said, we play shows every day, so we have to travel, pack, unpack. Yeah. So it's so b busy already that we don't have much time to make music. No. But then, apart from this tour we're doing right now, uh, when we go home and we have a few days, then of course we'll compose. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we're going to yeah. start working on some new stuff uh, yeah. in, the, in the next few weeks and stuff, so yeah. Uh, do you think it will be any different now that you will be making music n while not traveling? <laughs> that uh, we we'll see. Because I it was like a geography no, project we, we as well. We didn't think about it too much, but uh, surely it, it is going to be a bit different uh, because we're not on the road. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more relaxed. We can take time for things. Um, yeah, it's going to be different for sure. But I, it's always different what we do anyway, you know. So. You've made. Uh, you started with a with a track on your knees. Then you made a, an EP together, yeah. and now you've you're promoting this Project Ten yeah. album. Can you uh, see uh, the way your music has evolved through years? I mean, you started with one thing, and yeah. now it's um, it's not different. No, or for maybe sure. It, I mean, it has kind of. I think it. I think it it, it improves quality, uh, in my opinion, because we know now what we like, what we don't like, how we like things sounding, how we don't. Uh, and we artists, so it was four years ago that we did On Our Knees. So of course we, ev we evolved. Like yeah. me listening to On Our Knees, I still love the song, mm -hmm. which says a lot because we've been playing it so much. <laughs> But um, when I listened to it, I could, s I could see things I would change, for example. So, But we won't do it. We won't ever change it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's good that it's that it is like that. But of yeah. course, our ears have changed and we get better, I think. Uh, yeah, so, so of course, it, it's different. Doesn't mean that the songs are better, but it just means that I, I think our ears are, mm. for sure. Yeah. But you don't limit yourselves. I mean, Never. so this is a, a housey vibe, and mm -hmm. this one is jazzy. You nah, cannot tell. No, like, no, we don't you like. You uh, became more jazzy. Act or act actually, we hate uh, genres and uh -huh. like was yeah. of genres, and like people always ask, like, how how would you call this style? Like, how would you it's it's so. I think it's so annoying because music is just music, and then if yeah. if you f vibe with it, then it's good, whatever it is, and that's why the album ten is so um, eclectic. There's so many different, like there's a techno part, there's like a hip hop part, there's like a folk, there's like super emotional, super angry, like there's all kind of yeah. all kind of stuff, and we don't limit ourselves, that's for sure. And, yeah. and that's, that means it's really fun for us to make because we keep trying different styles and mixing them together. It's I think it's really fun for people who take the time to listen to our albums and who come to the shows. We play quite long shows, sometimes mm. like almost two hours, and. Like and, and, and yeah. people never ever tell us that they get a bit too long or a bit too too uh, tired uh, after yeah, two hours. Opposite. Because we, we proposed like a show where it just changes all the time. So we have like some mood and some style of music, and then we'll go into some uh, completely different progression into mm -hmm. something more electronic and techno, and then it will go down to something acoustic and then something more dancey. I mean, we just it just keeps moving and changing. So I think it's it makes it more interesting to listen to. But the downside of the that downside, is yeah, that yeah, the, the business, the music business, they like to have uh, something packaged that yeah, they can yeah. you know, put a name on and they can put in the right box, you know, to, exactly. to in this, this playlist, even in this for radio. Playlist, even for playlists, it's very true. It's like yeah. there's place for every kind of styles. And, and we don't fit into any box. No, exactly. And and so, so we're kind of struggling with the music business. Like the bi music business and us are like not really made for each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thankfully <laughs> there's internet and streaming platforms and everything and we find our fans naturally online or mm -hmm. they find us. Um, but yeah, that's maybe the downside of being so eclectic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Uh, you've mentioned the social media and all the streaming platforms. <coughs> uh, 
I mean, how did you learn to use those platforms? Uh, I don't know to to in order to make your to promote your songs and yeah. stuff like that. You because we are not born with this uh, knowledge. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, we we keep uh, learning. We keep learning all the time. It's like a, a kid that yeah, you know pick up trying. pick up a uh, iPad. At first, he would he wouldn't understand anything, but you give him a few months, he will know everything mm -hmm. how it works. So that's basically it. But we, we, it's those so platform keeps keeps evolving as well. Like for keep example. Changing, yeah. There's TikTok now, you know TikTok? There's, there's, it's like a Dutch Chinese app that's mm -hmm. like people uh, do weird stuff like dance or like um, um, sing over songs, existing songs and like do creative stuff. Uh, I barely heard of it, but it's actually a huge thing. And it's like yeah. people promote their music on there. So labels you, you actually signing now, and labels are signing artists uh, exact, who, exactly. who get famous on this on, on, the, on those platforms. Yeah. So and we're getting old already. Exactly, we're, we're <laughs> like, like <laughs> behind the game. We're I behind the game. Right, right. Exactly. There are new I kids mean, on the block. I, actually, no, I don't think. I just think you you gotta keep like you can't, you can't sleep on those. Like you have to keep even if it's you know you don't understand it or you're like what what is the point? You have to um, learn and to, to acknowledge that. There is a market over there for that. Mm -hmm. Wha how can I take advantage of those apps mm -hmm. and those things? Uh, but but you do it all by yourself. I yeah, mean. yeah, we do it all by ourselves. Yeah. And cool. uh, it can take a lot of time and it can get boring, to be honest. Like yeah. uh, social medias are not our favorite thing, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's not, but it's also beautiful because that's how we can see. All the people yesterday, we received like hundreds of messages and stories and stuff. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing. Uh, but it takes, of course, a lot of time to respond to everyone, to every day to keep uh, posting stuff. You know, it's, it can get boring, but it's part of it. It's part of yeah. the job. Some people have people working for, for that, like mm -hmm. a manager. Like, um, can you imagine sometime hiring a person <laughs> who will uh, take care honest, of to your... Be, to, to be honest, I... I, I could Marketing. imagine. I could imagine I, 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 if it's if it's a person that know that know you yeah, and know I I how you communicate. I don't I know. I mean, fine. for me, uh, uh, some, uh, something like Instagram is very personal. The whole point of it is that the, the audience, <coughs> the person who follows you, has a direct contact to yeah, you. Instagram. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, if you gi give the the keys to someone else who will do it, then it will be very unpersonal. You will be very just promotional because he cannot film himself and be like, "Hello, it's me." No. And it'll be like so, a little so bit fake. Yeah. <laughs> as well. So yeah. I I don't think I would hire not for that. I mean, maybe for mm -hmm. other sides of the promotion and the marketing, but uh, just just post less and just less stories, less posts, and just uh, whenever there's something really interesting or something I really want to share, do it, but then I'm trying to stop sharing anything that's not useful, not fun, or not really, that will not bring something to someone's life. It's like from when I, I watch other people's stories on Instagram, I, I get bored really quickly. I'm like, I don't, I, I, I don't care about this. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, okay, nice, it's your life, but I don't care about it. So I think about myself, I'm like, why would people, people care about what I do? You know, so I, I have to, I have to maybe some something. people think that you're interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but sure what I mean is what, I mean, what I mean is that I, would, I don't want to share anything that's not uh, interesting or that would, you know, I would be interested in if I was a fan following. So I'm posting less stuff, just mm. random stuff and just focusing on m now we're on tour. So we have a lot to post like yeah. we're in the van having fun and we are uh, sound check and we have a concert. We have some interviews. So it's we have a lot of interesting uh, relevant content to post yeah. but some days mm. we don't um, post for for weeks yeah. or like for for yeah for days yeah. it's fine so you don't bother yourself so oh, we haven't posted anything no. in like two but weeks <laughs> or no, three days no but someti sometimes sometimes you remind yourself and you're like <laughs> I should okay post we should I should, post, I should yeah. post a photo i should do something because that's, that's also the game and the all the algorithm are made this way you have to be constant that's that's how it works. Yeah. That's how you keep getting fans, and that's the that's how it works. Consistency has to consistency, be. and we live in a world that's super fast, and people forget super easily. So you gotta remind them all the time, and this is the hard part, I think. And um, it can be tiring. It, ca it can be really tiring and uh, uh, get uh, unpersonal and get like a um, duty. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a very hard point of uh, being a musician, I think. In, the, in this modern age, because you gotta play those those games, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't want to do it because you just you know you're chilling with your girlfriend somewhere, or you like you, you don't want yeah. like you, you don't feel like it, but you have to somehow. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the trick. But we, as we say, we're still learning all of those, and um, I think we're getting a hang of it. Yeah. 
I have one more question regarding the Project Tan social media mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, how did you like do any fundraising to for this trip, or That's you really just point. like? Yeah, yeah, we did. We did actually. It's the only reason it was possible. Yeah, because we don't have uh, at the moment a record label or a publisher, and that was by choice because we got some offers, but then they were very restrictive for us, and they were not good enough offers. We, in our opinion, mm -hmm. so we decided to stay independent. But that means that we needed funding to. to for this project because it's a pretty big project and mm. it's 10 months on the road of of uh, traveling so that's like you know b b cars planes and stuff like that um, apartments food uh, promotion like mm. everything it costs a lot of money so we we needed money and so we did a, f a fundraising like a um, crowdfunding campaign mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, where we well. we just made this video to explain the project how we wanted to do it why we needed their help and the money and then we offered a lot of different options for people. Like they could just pre-buy the CD, they could buy the vinyl, T-shirts. There were also like private shows at home, acoustic, electronic ones. Uh, we could produce, uh, we also offered to produce a, a track for somebody cool. for a certain price. Depending on how, on how, yeah, there was how much price gives. and you know, there's different rewards for, uh, for every price. And it worked and well. So that's, that's how we managed to collect uh, a, a really nice budget. And then plus we were playing shows, so the money from the shows, plus we still had some songs on the radio and stuff. So like everything, everything we made and everything we got, we put everything into this project because it was really a big, uh, ambitious project. Yeah. But that is cool. I mean, you made a, you presented a variety in your offering. So you are making music and for somebody, or you're playing shows at home, and that is yeah. that is n not just we are selling T-shirts and no, we exa want to go somewhere. Exactly, mm -hmm. there's something personal about it, and we we played some of those sh uh, private shows and stuff, and people love it, of course, because they uh, we are in the in the kitchen or like in the um, yeah. uh, living room, and it's it's really nice. You can connect with them. And you know those are people that give money to you, so you should be really grateful to them. So I mean, with this self-management and self-marketing, you can become consultant <laughs> and <a> consultancy <laughs> agency for sure, for <laughs> sure, <laughs> easily, easily. That's the, yeah. that's the thing. It was like we've developed so many different skills. That's what I was saying earlier. Is that traditionally an artist would concentrate on just making music and pl playing music, but we do like a lot of different things around it. So in a way, it's sometimes a bit much and we yeah. would like to have more time to just focus on the music but on the other mm. hand it means we have all these different skills that we can use uh, even if we want to do other projects in life yeah. or, if, or just for our personal life like to get you know clever about how to organize it how mm. to how to be I don't know healthy or how to how to be happy <laughs> stuff like that you know it's all skills that you can actually use to make your, your own life better but well it n oh you mentioned before that uh, you had some uh, offers and that some studios and some labels approached to you, mm -hmm. but oh, yeah. you didn't find these uh, uh, offerings like uh, attractive enough. Yeah. What it, what would it take for a studio to offer you so you so you'd agree to that? Uh, I mean, a what a label, you mean, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean. <laughs> it's it's a combination of things. It's right? Yeah, it's there's the. What are the necessary? Like I mean, there's well, obviously the amount of money they're offering. Okay. That's 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 one thing, but it's and not the most important at all. It's because it's not the most important to us, but it's no, important for it's a contract important because yeah. the more money a, a label uh, invests, the more they have to work hard to rec recuperate Recoup that money and start mm. making money uh, themselves. So that forces them to work on your project and make it bigger and really do a difference. So of course that's one thing. That's one thing, and also just yeah, show. That they really care about the project, and that they really and they, that they understand us, you know, and that they understand what we want, uh, and we don't want to be like a super commercial, super like mm -hmm. you know. And it's hard because label, of course, they need to make money. That's that's yeah. they that's are commercial. <laughs> that's exactly, the they're they're commercial, commercial by a company, sense, yeah. you know, by a sense, they are commercial. Yeah, right. So it's very hard to find uh, a label. But and also, however, more and more, I feel there's more and more interesting labels. In other parts of the world, I'm not talking about Universal, Sony, and all mm -hmm. those stuff, but more independent labels somehow, mm -hmm. um, for electronic music especially, that are more like a family, you know? They're mm -hmm. more like a roster of artists that really push each other and they get each other on tour. And that's, I think, a way we like. Like, it, it would be a good, uh, like having a family somehow, having people like-minded and with the same uh, goals. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a right 
Label. Yeah, but then we, the, I think the, the most important thing we need like from a label, it's a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility. Yeah, that yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. like to give that. <laughs> uh, yeah, because like, we yeah, have yeah. always been Because independent. you've been invested into. <laughs> yeah, no, well, and exactly. I know. Uh, and I understand that. But for us, we've created our own project uh, all by ourselves. We've been independent. We've been able to do whatever music we want, however, and release it however we want. Plus, we have the, the, the project together, but we also have solo projects. So we don't have want to have a label that says, okay, no, you cannot do this, you cannot do this, then we have to wait for this. Yeah. And so the give them freedom the and flexibility is something that uh, it's, it's hard to get a lot of when you sign a deal with a label. Mm. So that's, of course, something that's really important for us as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, you've mentioned the solo pro project. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine this time uh, when when you get this certain feeling that, well, <coughs> I want to work on my solo project right now? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you can express yourself it's through working together. Yeah, it's I mean, uh, it's, it's, a it's a even easier because it's, it's a bit the here. case now. I mean, we because we've been working a lot on this project and we're gonna work together again. But we both, of course, feel the need sometime to to do our thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's way different, of course. I, like I'm more, way more electronic and like dance, uh, and I can express myself very well uh, in our uh, common projects. Mm -hmm. But it can only go to a point, you know. It's like I can't do to a certain extent. Yeah, like I can't like uh, play, too like too go crazy. to too, too crazy or like to play uh, an hour of like drops and like yeah. heavy, heavy stuff, which I love to. Uh, so of course, we have to make all of that cohabit. Um, but yeah, it, I think it's gonna it's gonna be natural. Like we also tell each other uh, mm -hmm. the truth. Like, you, you know, if we want, like mm -hmm. if if he gets an opportunity for his solo project that's really crazy and that he wants to take it, I will never uh, say no. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's like it's, it's just that's his thing. It's normal. That's and the perks we of had being independent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. It's like yeah, exactly. Because if you go in, in a label, they kind of want you to stay together and like do, do all that and they will squeeze you as mm -hmm. much as, as they can. And yeah, it can be scary because it's our solo projects are quite different, of mm -hmm. course. Um, so, but yeah, but we're, I mean, we're getting closer to the point now where yeah. we can, we can find a compromise with the label. We're discussing like we keep constantly discussing with, with labels. And so far we just say no to the all, any uh, real offer, but we keep like the conversation going with different people because they're, you know, the good people and they're very interested and they, they've been following us for a few years now. So we mm -hmm. know that they, they, you know, they're really interested. And now we're getting closer to a point where we can find that compromise where we can say, okay, we're going to do like one album, but mm -hmm. then be free after that. And uh, we're going to give them some exclusivity on the project and the album, but then keep some freedom as well for ourselves. So we're kind of trying to find that point now, that balance that point balance. between what we need and what they need. And we're getting closer to it. So it's not impossible that in the near future we'll be collaborating with labels. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll yeah. see. I have a question about your background. I mean, were you born musicians or you just kind of got fond of music and started making it yourself? <laughs> I mean, I think uh, no one and is... And would you do anything like yeah. other than music? Yeah. Can you imagine uh, like yeah. being I think no an one office worker or something? No one is a uh, born, born <laughs> musician. No one uh, is born anything. It's like you develop a certain taste for something and you just work on it. Nobody's born with like... Except maybe Mozart or I don't, I don't know who. <laughs> but you know some, some people with a certain brain, a certain... Yeah. But the thing is like you get interested by something uh, at a young age or not sometimes you s people start doing stuff at 30 or like whatever um, but yeah we, we both started pretty young yeah. piano guitar um, being in bands or like b playing you know sh uh, shows like more like heavy metal uh, yeah heavy band. metal we were really into, into well, that yeah, both I mean, of us my first band that was about 12 <laughs> 13 and uh, we were playing like Rage Against the Machine and Metallica and stuff like cool. that mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was playing electric guitar and piano and yeah, mm. yeah we came from that kind of musical background and then evolved into discovering new styles of music new styles of production yeah. and getting really interested in all these sounds that we couldn't make with the live instruments so we moved away from that more and more into towards even more early towards like almost completely electronic yeah. now yeah. and me hybrid between the two I guess where there's still some uh, acoustic parts but most of the production and the arrangement is electronic based. I mean, it's mm -hmm. um, <coughs> difference between, uh, I mean, electronic um, music Pro production, production, which means it's in the computer, mm -hmm. but I can use real uh, instrument sounds. It's still electronic production and electronic music, which is like a genre. Made, uh, made, made to make people dance somehow, yeah. like make to play at festival and make to uh, play at clubs and stuff. There is a difference. Uh, yeah. 
But have you ever considered like or oh, doing other stuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean. Oh, oh, the job. I would. I would. I would. I would, I would <laughs> the job. Forgot. Forgot oh, about the, the job. Yeah, 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 forgot about the initial about question. About no, the question. But for me, uh, yeah. For me, yes. I think I, there's a lot of different things I could do and and enjoy doing it. It's just that I picked music and then I try to do my <coughs> best at doing it and enjoying it and being happy with that. But um, I used to study architecture, for example, and that's something that I would really love to do as well because I think I think there's so many like cool creative things we can do with that, and I love you know, the engineering side of things and maths and physics and stuff mm. like that. So, and also you can get really creative with new technologies, with like how to um, think about the environment and the space of living all at the same time. So, you know, it is, architecture mm. would be one example of uh, um, another job mm -hmm. that I would love to do. But I think there's plenty others as well I could find. But that's just music for mm. now. Yeah, that's just <laughs> music for now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's never just music. We, you know, we like, for example, we love uh, doing pictures or like, you know, doing videos, videos and all, mm. all of that. So the nice thing is that we can com like complement each, uh, each other, mm -hmm. uh, the, the skills like. So it's not just music, it's multimedia. It's yeah. multimedia. Yeah. But of course, music is the focus. And uh, for me, it's always been, it's going to be for a, a while uh, until, until we don't know when. You know, s lots of thing can, uh, things yeah. can happen in, in life, you know. Maybe I will get deaf someday, and you oh know, no. <laughs> you know, you never know, you never know, you know, well, and yeah, then sure. and then you have but to. But that would be sad. That would be really sad. But you know, you have to get other things to mm. keep you living. So would be maybe yeah. video, maybe pictures, maybe just traveling, maybe maybe like cooking. Said. You know, I, I just started <laughs> cooking recently. I'm, I like I suck yeah, at it. Yeah, I love it. And uh, it's actually really fun. It's actually something I really enjoy. Uh, I never thought about it. Like I, it's something I never even. Considered no, doing. No, 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 no. It would, it would always cook for me. <laughs> yeah. During the tour. I love cooking and stuff yeah. as well, and I, and I like <coughs> love food and stuff. So, so yeah. you have like you have divided the household chores between yourselves. Like somehow, <laughs> somehow. Yeah. So somehow. you're cooking and you're cleaning. Uh, and oh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Ah, <laughs> uh, guys, what are your like next plans? What what is awaiting for you in uh, recent months? Um, so well, what are you up to? Um, so, so now we, well, tomorrow we're going back to Poland and we finish this tour. Um, then we have a sh few shows here and there, yeah, like Belgium, um, Romania, quite big shows. Uh, yeah, in Romania, that's true. We um, then we go back in Belgium. We do some so, some um, composing. Some okay. composing. We're going to do a lot uh, of writing because we we want to write a lot of new material, see mm -hmm. how where it gets. But yeah. so over the next three or four months, there's going to be a lot of composing, writing, producing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time separately because yeah. like Oli's going to Japan for a month. Yeah, I'm going to Japan You're for a month. You're going back to Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah because uh, my uh, girlfriend is Japanese. Mm. I met her during the tour uh, in Italy, <laughs> however. I met her in Italy, but she's, okay. uh, she, she's Japanese. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like to spend time with her for sure. And so that's something... Mm -hmm. That that's important uh, to take time for. So I'm going to meet uh, some of her family in Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's good. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, we have another tour in coming up in March. We have some shows in Belgium, but also uh, in Turkey, in Georgia, in Armenia, and we're also discussing some more shows in Ukraine. So hopefully, we'll hopefully see. Hopefully, you're coming back. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then we would uh, love to really. Yeah, and then we will focus on these new songs and new album maybe. Yeah. And in the summer will be a lot of festivals. So I hope al also that we can maybe play some festivals in Ukraine. So if you're a, a you know a festival a promoter or booking yeah, if a you team, know any guys, uh, just just uh, call us. That's where we're keen. We're happy to come back to Ukraine and play some festivals. It will be cool. So that's uh, an, an open announcement yeah, to exactly, everybody yeah. who is watching like, yeah. and listening Hello. to us. <laughs> I'm talking to you, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if you are in Ukraine and so, or somewhere nearby, please let us know because we are, you know, kind of a radio that is on the road all the time. We don't have a proper studio okay, as well. Yeah, yeah. Like us. Cool. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are like free-spirited, like like-minded exactly. people. Exactly. Uh, guys, it was pleasure talking to it you. Uh, thank, you uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for playing an, an amazing show yesterday in Lviv. And hopefully, I wish you all the best in all your future endeavors in making music. Uh, you sounded like a lot of fun. 
Thank you so much. Come back, come back, please come back. Of course, yes. Я нагадую нашим глядачам і слухачам, що ми розмовляли з хлопцями з проекту RO and Canoba. Хлопці з Бельгії приїхали вперше в Україну, відіграли чудовий концерт вчора в Fest Republic, і можливо ще повернуться. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I could be the one that you miss at night when you cannot sleep I could be the fire burning in your heart warming up your dreams I could wear a crown sitting on the throne and you could be my queen I could be the soul that I go to for when you cannot win I could be your, I could be your, I could be your, I could be your I could save your life, I could be your air when you cannot Радіо «Сковорода» 